Hello, hello. So today we're going to take a look at a special type of weather report which is used in aviation and that is called a METAR. So METAR stands for Meteorological Terminal Air Report. METAR reports give an indication of the current weather at an airport or weather station and they're usually created once or twice per hour. So the best way to learn about this report is to simply throw one up on the screen and go through it step by step. So this is an example of a METAR report. This report is for Inverness Airport and this was taken on the 25th of September at 11am local time. Now to the untrained eye this will look very cryptic and confusing but METAR reports follow a standard layout and format so hopefully once you've watched this video everything will make a lot more sense. So the first part of a METAR report will indicate which airport it's for. You can see here that it starts with Echo Gulf Papa Echo, which is the unique identifying code for Inverness Airport. Next up is the day and time that the report was created. So in this example it reads 250950Z. So the 25 stands for the 25th day of the month, in this case it was the 25th of September. And then the 0950Z stands for 9.50am Zulu time. So Zulu time is the same as Universal Coordinated Time or Greenwich Meridian Time. It is a reference time by which all other times across the world are calculated. Now because it's still British Summer Time in the UK which is used to maximise daylight, it is actually GMT plus one in the UK just now. So. I looked at this report at 11am local time, which meant that it was actually 10am GMT or Zulu time. And then the report was created at 9.50am Zulu time. So the report was actually created 10 minutes before I read it. I hope that makes sense. The next section represents wind measurements. So the first three numbers relate to the direction that the wind is coming from. The last two numbers and the KT represent the wind speed in knots. So in our example, the wind is blowing from a direction of 250 degrees at a speed of 16 knots. The next four numbers represent the visibility in meters. So in our example, it reads 9999, which means the visibility is 10 kilometers or higher, which is obviously very good. However, if it was a foggy day, this may read something like 2000 if you could only see a distance of 2000 meters or 2 kilometers. Next up we have VCSH which is actually an additional bit of information which you might not see in all reports. VC represents vicinity and SH represents rain showers. So VCSH means that there are rain showers in the vicinity of the airport. Next we have several bits of information relating to cloud coverage. So a quick lesson in cloud coverage in aviation. Cloud coverage is defined by octas or eighths of the sky. Now if one or two octas of sky are covered, this is known as few clouds. Three and four octas are known as scattered clouds. Five, six and seven octas are known as broken clouds and 8 out of 8 octas is known as overcast, where there is a complete layer of cloud covering the sky. So in our example we have three different layers of clouds. The first one reads few 015, so that means there are one or two eighths of cloud coverage at 1500 feet. The number on the end there reads like a flight level. The next layer is few 020 CB, so there's another layer of clouds at 2,000 feet. And the CB advises that the type of clouds are cumulonimbus, which can form into heavy rain showers, thunderstorms, and other forms of strong weather, which can impact flight. So as a pilot, you would want to be aware and stay clear of those types of clouds. And then lastly, there's a layer of scattered clouds at 3,000 feet. So all in all, it's a pretty cloudy day up in Inverness. No surprises there. The next couple of numbers represent the temperature and dew point in degrees Celsius. So the temperature here is 12 degrees Celsius and the dew point is 8. Sometimes you may see an M in front of the number, which indicates that the temperature is minus whatever the number may be. 
And then finally, on the end, you have the barometric pressure. So in this case, it gives the QNH, which is 1015 millibars. So let's look at another report quickly to get a bit more familiar with them. So here's another example taken in September again, and hopefully, if I've explained things well, you should be able to recognize about two thirds of this report. But I'll give you a few seconds just now to try and read it and try and decode it. Okay, so I'm going to go through this again, step by step, and just explain what it's telling us. So, it's for Echo Golf Lima Lima, which is actually London Heathrow Airport. The report was taken on the 29th of the month, so the 29th of September, at 18.20 Zulu time, so 20 minutes past 6pm Zulu time. The wind is coming from a direction of 070 degrees at 7 knots. Now the next bit, CAVOC, is something new. What that stands for is ceiling and visibility is okay. So basically what that means is that there is no significant cloud coverage above the airport or around the airport. It's one of those days where you look up and there's barely a cloud in the sky, a perfect day for flying. Next we have the temperatures. So the temperature was 15 degrees Celsius and the dew point was 8 degrees Celsius. The Q&H was 1034 millibars, and then finally you have a new bit of information again, which is no SIG, which basically means that there are no significant changes expected to the weather. So there's a couple of ex relatively simple METAR reports. Um, they can become very complex and have lots of little bits of additional information. So if you want to see a list of all of the abbreviations that can form a METAR report, you can click on the annotation on the screen or in the link in the description to read those. Alternatively, there are lots of websites available that can translate a METAR report into a more understandable format. Let's look at an example quickly. All you would simply do is copy a METAR report into the text box, hit translate, and then it'll provide you with the information in a much more friendly format. So that's all for now. In the next couple of days, I'll be releasing another video covering Meta Reports for the USA, where they have a slightly different format and slightly different abbreviations for their reports. But I feel that it's enough of a difference that it's worth covering in its own video. So that'll be out in the next couple of days. And then after that, I'm hoping to release my next video where we'll take a closer look at flight planning in more detail and have a look at all of the factors that need to be considered for a VFR flight. Hope to see you there, many thanks for watching, and I'll catch you later.